Hi, namaste, and thanks for tuning into this video. I'm excited to do yet another video in the Crystal and Gemstone series, specifically discussing the energies of my favorite gifts from Prakriti, from Mother Nature herself, and how I use them in my day-to-day -day life, how I recommend other people use them if you're also interested in the natural vibrations and sacred uplifting energies produced in the rock and mineral kingdom. When I was first new to exploring the energy of crystals, it was kind of like a shock for me. I want to tell you a little bit of my own background. I haven't gotten into this before. When I was about 19 years old, 1920, I moved to Vancouver to attend the Emily Carr University of Art and Design. I was passionate about abstract art, drawing, painting, watercolors, acrylics. I was fascinated especially by abstract and it was a no-brainer. Like I heard that was the best school in Canada, so that's the one I went to. But when I got to Vancouver, I started to feel this strange mystical calling. I had more fun reading my tarot cards at night and looking at the sky, looking at the stars and the clouds in wonder than I did sitting in class hearing about the history of different pigments or listening to an instructor tell me how I should or shouldn't put marks on paper. I suddenly started to divert my attention away from the art created by human hands and towards the art created by nature. A series of synchronicities led me to a beautiful little shop on Granville Island, the same kind of like few block radius where the school was located. I found a little shop called The Crystal Ark, and it's this boat-shaped dark blue building sitting just on the edge of a duck pond. It's such a cool architecture, it looks like an ark, literally like the name Crystal Ark. And just like the mythical ark filled with animals, this is like an ark filled with gemstones. The moment I walked into that shop, I saw huge amethyst geodes on either side of the door, big enough that you could walk into like a crystal cave. And behind glass shelves, every imaginable type of colored crystal and stone was set in silver. I wandered around like a kid in a candy store. It was so exciting and I felt energized. It's like if you drink a few shots of espresso, how you'll just feel like you're ready to jump, ready to do something. I was getting this feeling like I was buzzing. And the girl behind the counter, a very knowledgeable, very beautiful, knowledgeable, earth kind of spirit, earth mother energy kind of a lady, she told me that that's the feeling that people get when they wear stones. I later discovered many cultures, many traditions around the world use crystals as medicine. And they're not just interchangeable. It's not like every blue stone is the same. There's blue tanzanite, blue sapphire, blue zircon, every shade of blue stone, every type of blue stone, depending on the way the stone is formed, radiates a different energy. Turquoise can lead you into a shamanic journey and inspire self-healing. Tanzanite can assist with meditation and opening the third eye. Each one has its own different purpose, its own different function. And so, I mean, I'm kind of giving you the intro to this segment all over again, but really crystal energy is something I don't take seriously, I take it sincerely. I have a lot of fun with it and I've made my life's work working with stones making jewelry that I myself wear and that I love to share with others who are also into this. Anyhow, one of the unquestionably strongest gems on the planet comes from the Moldau River in the Czech Republic, and it's called Moldavite. You can see it in these dangly earrings I'm wearing right now. I deliberately wore a shirt the same color as the stone. Moldavite is actually a tektite material which means it didn't grow below the surface of the Earth's crust. It's not something that came shooting out of a volcano. It's not something mineable. It's not something you can dig a hole and find. It's something created by a meteoric impact. The moment a huge ancient meteorite struck that ground near Moldau, 
It fused with the top layer of ground, the sediment from the earth, and became something entirely new. So it's like that fire coming down from the sky that we would call a shooting star became something new on impact. You can't really call Moldavite a meteorite, but you also can't call it an earth mineral because it's a fusion of the two. Now, tektites come in lots of different forms. Probably if I glance around my room, I can find another kind of tektite to show you, a black tektite, which is the most common type. Here we go, a recent custom order that I made. This is like rough black tektite. That's found all over the place where meteorite impacts have struck. And I've made a whole video just about that stone. But Moldavite is special because it's considered the world's only gem-grade tektite because it's transparent and because it's this lovely green color. Anyhow, I'd read all kinds of material about Moldavite and its power to create huge transformation in the lives of those who wear it, who meditate with it, who carry it, who put it under their pillows. And I decided I had to have some of this. So one day, I walked down to the Crystal Arc on Granville Island. I was intent on finding some Moldavite, and synchronistically, they had just received a new order. What's funny is the moment I entered the shop, Christine, who was managing it at the time, looked at me and said, I see you're answering the call of the Moldavite. And I just stood there like in a trance because you hear about people with psychic powers, but you don't every day encounter somebody who can read your mind or who can predict what you're in a situation for. I just asked her how she knew. And she started to laugh and she said, really, did you come here for Moldavite today? And I told her, yeah, I woke up and I just felt like today is the day I'm going to buy my first piece of Moldavite. And so she pulled out a tray of these luscious green gemstones and I picked out a small pendant and she asked me, if I was ready for my entire life to be thrown into upheaval. Now, that's not the kind of a question you would typically say yes to. Upheaval means what? Being shaken from the foundations, being thrown off balance, losing things that you think you need, having a major move, unexpected changes. I told her I had read that Moldavite sparks divine transformation, that it's like a spiritual cleansing, whatever's not serving you will drop away from you. And she laughed and she said, but do you know how that happens practically? She described that if someone is in an unhealthy relationship, if they're being verbally abused, emotionally abused, taken for granted, even physically assaulted, Moldavite will boil that. It'll bring it to the point where you just can't take it anymore and you'll find a way out. If somebody is in a work environment that they just don't really resonate with anymore, if their coworkers are gossipy or if they're doing something they don't agree with, like maybe selling a product that they don't believe in, again, Moldavite will bring the situation to its boiling point so that it comes to a termination. Sometimes when people aren't ready for that, for example, if they're having an addiction that they're not ready to drop, or if they're in a codependent relationship that maybe isn't serving their highest good, but they're very attached to, wearing Moldavite suddenly makes it feel as if things are just getting bad. And so people will say the stone is intense, it created chaos in their lives, or that it disturbs them. In fact, a lot of crystal healers will only sell you Moldavite with a warning and say only use it if you're ready to lose everything and rebuild. Now, in my case, at that point in time in my life, I had already left art school. Maybe I'll make a video about why. I was working at DKNY, like a high-end ladies fashion retailer that sold leather, that sold wool, and I was a strict vegan. I wouldn't wear these things. And so I felt kind of like a corporate whore, like I was selling something that I didn't agree with. It was like selling my dignity. I was in a very bad relationship. Yes, I've had those in the past, just like everybody else. And so I was ready to lose everything because quite frankly, I didn't really care about the stuff that I had. And it was a great decision. But when I bought that piece of Moldavite, I didn't buy just the Moldavite. Christine suggested that I wear it with something else to kind of ease into those transformations gradually instead of 
doing it with a sudden brute force that can sometimes make people feel bad afterwards. She told me about the stone tourmaline. I just love even saying the word, it sounds nice, right? Tourmaline. Tourmaline, it's a beautiful gemstone that comes in a variety of colors and each form holds a different energetic vibration, but each of them individually and when you wear them all together helps you balance yourself on your terms. Putting on Moldavite, Moldavite doesn't decide whether something's going to be convenient for you or not. If you're in a bad relationship, you're gonna have the kind of fight that ends it. If you're in a workplace that you don't really, really feel like you fit in with, other people are going to start recognizing that and either pushing you out or you're just gonna storm out one day because you can't take it anymore. Moldavite is like the tough love, you know, gross tasting medicine, but it works. Whereas tourmaline is like a motherly love. It's a soft energy. The same transformations will happen, but maybe not so abruptly. And so I bought myself a tourmaline necklace to keep the Moldavite pendant on. That way it's kind of like the best of both worlds. For that reason, today I want to share with you the energies of tourmaline. I wore the longest tourmaline necklace I've ever made. You can see that it has green, pink, golden, and black tourmaline all in one design. What each of these stones adds to the person who wears it is just so cool. Quite frankly, I love this stone. Black tourmaline, I'll start there. People sometimes talk about the negative vibrations they feel from other people. When people suck their energy or act like energy vampires or fill their head with negativity, either gossiping about others or just complaining about life, saying things suck, this sucks, that sucks, I hate this, I hate that, I keep losing money, I keep losing friends, people are doing this, everyone's hurting me, oh, there's a conspiracy against me. What black tourmaline does is create an energetic shield so that when other people are venting and spewing out that kind of negativity and just trying to drain you of your energy by making their problems your problems, complaining. What black tourmaline does is create a space around you where all of that negativity doesn't touch you. They call this psychic protection. That's what psychic protection is in a nutshell. There have also been studies that have found that black tourmaline repels the EMF radiation from small gadgets and even the Wi-Fi signals. So people who are afraid that the contamination kind of going through the airwaves from all the modern electricity, modern technology that they're using might be hurting them, have been known to keep tourmaline taped to the backs of their cell phones, kind of gridded around their laptops, so they'll wear it all the time just to create an energy field or a barrier against these things. Now, I'm not really a hard scientist. I don't know the exact effect tourmaline has on equipment and technology, but I do know for sure, whenever I gave a professional tarot card reading to somebody else, whenever I would go into big crowds of people, or whenever I would have large groups of people gather in my space, whether for an art gallery exhibit or for a dinner party, I would always make sure to be wearing a little bit of black tourmaline. And for me, I feel that makes a big difference. Now, black tourmaline is especially recommended to kids who go to school because it's so easy for them to lose their self-esteem in the face of bullying. It's also recommended for people starting a new job or moving to a new city because sometimes the collective group energy of a different place is different and uncomfortable if it's not what you're used to. Black tourmaline is like the best stone for psychic protection, maybe tied with a stone called black obsidian. Maybe I'll get to that in another video. Anyhow, when you wear black tourmaline, you become centered within yourself and other people's negativity won't really hit you. The same way if you're a downer and you don't know it, if you drag people down, if you whine and complain and dwell on things and you try to vent that because it's just eating you up inside, wearing black tourmaline is like a little gift you can give to your friends and relatives to make you more tolerable because that shield acts both ways. It prevents their negativity from seeping into you and it also contains that frequency that stops that negativity from being spread to them. 
so both ways it's a nice, nice stone. Pink tourmaline, one of my all-time favorites. Let's see if I can show you my favorite one. Here's a nice gem, it's like pink and clear, right there. Pink tourmaline is known as the most feminine stone of the heart chakra. It's like the mother's love solidified in rock. What pink tourmaline is especially known for is healing and cleansing the wounds of the heart that have developed over time by being told you're not good enough. When you get your grades at school and you think you did really well on something and it's lower than you feel you deserve and suddenly think, ugh, I'm not that good. Or if somebody insults you, if somebody teases you, when a pet dies, when a friend or relative passes away, when sad things happen, it starts to take its toll on your inner space. Life seems less happy, life seems less good. Suddenly you feel as if you're stranded in your identity and you may or may not enjoy it. Beyond that, the emotional and psychological wounds that you develop when you feel that you don't fit in with society. When I became a strict vegetarian as a little kid and when I became vegan at the age of 12, and back then, God, that was 1999, the word vegan wasn't even known yet. I really felt as if I was a loner in a strange land and like everyone around me was crazy, killing animals and eating their corpses and they thought I was weird for saying that that's gross. Pink tourmaline helps heal those inner wounds of feeling lonely, of feeling misunderstood, of feeling chastised or discriminated against. Anyone going with gender identity issues who feels themselves or identifies as one thing but feels trapped in an identity that seems to be something else. When people are making major life decisions and they know that that's going to shake the equilibrium of the people around them and possibly cause them to lose a lot of love that they're attached to, pink tourmaline helps to heal those wounds and strengthen and reaffirm the self-esteem, self-love, and self-expression. Green tourmaline is interesting. A lot of people resonate with the color green and think of that as the heart stone, especially if you see chakra jewelry. Jewelry that's aligned with the seven chakras being represented by seven colors. I should have prepared this in advance. I'm digging through my crystals right now to find a piece to show you. Like this. When you see stones representing each of the seven chakras, green is usually right there in the center to represent the heart. In the case of tourmaline though, pink is really the color of stone for the heart, while green is the stone that represents connecting with and communicating with nature. People wearing and meditating with green tourmaline describe being able to communicate with plants, with animals, with Mother Earth herself, with the spirit of Gaia, with the stars, with the wind, with all the different elements because it brings us into the space of oneness that can see beyond the barriers not only of our species but even of our individuality. We experience that oneness. When you wear green tourmaline, you become like a beacon of love that others can connect to. Animals will recognize you and respond to you. If you have any kinds of confusions while you're walking outside, it will feel as if nature herself is showing you the right direction to take, is talking to you. Green tourmaline is a very mystical gem, but at the same time, it's very grounded and earthy. It connects you to your roots and it connects you with love to everything and everyone in your surroundings but golden tourmaline, that tourmaline that looks a little bit yellowish, uh, like this piece right here. Golden tourmaline is the one that connects the most with the Manipuraka Chakra or the solar plexus energy center, which is like the seat of your personal will and your self drive. When you get a gut feeling, it comes from that chakra. When you feel like you just want to achieve a goal, you're ready to do it, but you don't know how to do it. It means there's a slight blockage in that chakra. A lot of us will know exactly what we want, but we won't know how to get it. A lot of people say they want to be famous, but if you ask them, okay, what's your talent? What do you have to offer the world? Why should people care about you? They won't know. People will say they want to be rich, but when you ask them, okay, how are you going to earn your money? They'll say, I don't know. 
A lot of people will want to be fit, well-toned, with muscle definition, but when you ask them, okay, what exercises are you doing? They'll say, oh, I don't do any. I don't know. When we clear the solar plexus, when we clear that Manipuraka chakra and infuse fiery energy into that seat of the will, the moment we want something, the path for how to get it becomes revealed. Innately, each and every one of us has a plan that we bring down into life with us. We have something called prarabdha karma. That means in the infinite collection of possibilities in the multiverse, in the universe, all the various identities and roles and decisions and actions that can be taken, we bring into one individual lifetime a certain set of things we're going to do experiences we're going to have, places we're going to visit. Now, of course, we have the free will to change that. But when we feel like we're passionate about something, when we really want it, when it's something all-encompassing and consuming of our inner space, we can be guaranteed that's part of our prarabdha. Having something like golden tourmaline on us, carrying that gem, means that we can achieve the completion of all the collective tasks within that prarabdha with ease. Instead of saying, boy, I remember like I was telling someone recently, back when I was at Emily Carr University visiting the Crystal Arc on a daily basis, I used to fantasize and imagine, wow, what if one day my job was just making jewelry out of crystals? What if I got to play with rocks and gems all day long and I didn't have to go to class and I didn't have to stretch a canvas and I didn't have to worry about lugging cans of gesso up the hill in Vancouver every day? What if I could just make jewelry all the time? Back then, that's like having a block in the Manipuraka Chakra. I knew what I wanted, but I felt trapped in a different circumstance and I didn't know how to change it. Now, luckily, when something is your prarabdha, the circumstances of life will always bring you back into alignment, will pull you into the direction of what you're focused on. But when you understand how it functions and you carry a stone to enhance that energy, it comes more quickly, more easily, and with more grace and fluidity. Instead of thinking, I'm stuck here, I want to be there, what do I do? You'll problem solve, you'll know, okay, this is where I am, this is where I'm going, and you'll just make it happen for yourself. Personally, there are a few crystals and stones that I wear on a regular basis. I've made myself jewelry out of Herkimer quartz, out of amethyst citrine and ametrine, out of moldavite, and out of tourmaline. These are some of my absolute top top favorites and that's why when a single mineral is available in such a wide variety of colors and I mean some of these stones I could just get lost gazing at for days because they have both pink and green together in one gem which is called watermelon tourmaline others are perfectly clear transparent divine crystals others have chateauants which is the rare um, formation that we would call a cat's eye look, chateauants. It's like when the light is diffused through multiple little tiny prismatic strands at the same time that looks like the iris of an eye shining. Each one of them, some of them are opaque, some of them are clear, but all of them just embrace you like a warm hug. Someone recently on Instagram asked me what it feels like to carry tourmaline. She's worked with lots of gems, but has never actually had a tourmaline piece. For a second, I just closed my eyes and remembered what it feels like to hold tourmaline. And the best way I can describe it is that tourmaline is like getting a hug from Mother Nature. And so this is one of my favorite minerals. These are the best known uses for the four primary colors it's available in. And I hope you love it as much as I do. Check out the link to my Etsy shop in the video description where you can find pieces like this necklace and these earrings and many, many more. I've got designs for men's jewelry as well that use tourmaline. See all the stunning colors, the gold, the pink, the green, the black, and black obsidian to balance it out. And of course, lots of pendants and earrings and pieces for women as well. And if there's a crystal or a gemstone you'd like to know more about, or if you want to hear more stories about Moldavite and Herkimer Quartz, maybe that'll be my next crystal video, let me know in the comment section, and I look forward to sharing more and more about one of my great passions, 
gemstones. Thanks for tuning in for now. We'll see you in the next video. Namaste.